understand how I was taught on it was that the soul knows what it's in for when it comes back down onto the earth. The recall comes in, the illusion goes over, and it's fight for your life to get back up to the higher planes. And the ones who master that through the illusion get to go further on their path. The ones who don't get another opportunity again. So in other words, you can't get up to this higher path until yeah. you master the illusion of the lower Yeah, path. that's how I was taught on yeah. reincarnation. Now these are extensions to the original reincarnation beliefs. So what happened years and years and years ago, many millennia ago, many thousands of years ago, was that these beliefs were just very, very basic. The way they began actually was that um, a child would be born and it would have seemed to have very similar characteristics to a person who recently passed. And so that, what they would say then is that the breath of life, or the soul, it later became known as, entered the new child as it was born. So this, they started believing that this must be the reincarnation now is the term. But back then it was just like the reliving or the rebirth of a person who was existing beforehand that they knew. So the that's... Namas get still chosen like that. Yeah, it was presented like that very basically in the beginning. And then what's happened is there's certain intellect, there's certain conundrums, if you like, that are not solved by that belief. Uh, one of them is, would a God of love even allow that to occur? What, what's going on? You know, why? But as a result of that, the belief has taken many, many forms. So, so you've got that form that you've just mentioned, you know, with, with this whole process of going to a higher place, by actually mastering the lower place. But then you've got <coughs> you've got other beliefs too, where where it's like this is just a continuous cycle. There's that belief too. And you can actually get into a to a state of nirvana if you like on earth. That's also a belief. And so there's lots of different beliefs now associated to this reincarnation process. But the key is to look at it with love every time. So let's look at your that that one that you mentioned which was the belief that if you master it at the soul level, you will awaken at the soul level somehow, the illusion will disappear and you'll now remember what you've experienced in the past and then you'll work through it, uh, which is obviously a different process again, and then once you've mastered that, you go to the higher place. Now there's a couple of uh, things to, be, to do about that, isn't it? Firstly, we're basically saying that to get to a higher place, we've got to keep returning. So it's a process of keeping returning. We also have to at some time have an awakening at the soul level. How do you have an awakening at the soul level if you've just been abused all your life and you know had some major, major damage put upon you in life after life after life after life that you haven't managed to actually have the awakening? What what's going on there? Is that is that a loving thing to to set up, do you feel? Would you set up that for your own children? That's a question. Really. So can you see with every form of reincarnation belief, if we look at it from the point of view of love, there is always some holes in it. So how does the laws of attraction fit into that? Which is interesting what you just said. But there has been there's so many abuse on the planet Earth right now, on so, so many different levels. Yep. You couldn't build a library of size of Sydney on it. That's right. So we're coming back to that, yep. how does that fit into your belief on reincarnation not existing? Uh, my belief isn't that reincarnation doesn't exist. There is a reincarnation, but but I'll explain it later. Okay. Yeah. But in terms of how it fits in, um, everything that's happening on Earth is the result of man's choices to walk away from God. So there's been no interference. Our choice. Yeah. When you say no interference, there is a lot of interference from spirits. And that's something that I want to discuss in this process because um, even these beliefs of reincarnation are very much interfered with by spirits. There's also interstellar, interstellar belief of reincarnation from other planets. Certainly. And extraterrestrial influences, which there's so much written on that for thousands of years. Yes, but again, you need to understand what extraterrestrial influences are, which are all part of this spirit world versus material world discussion. Yeah, and they're all all of those questions are all, they all have very similar answers actually that are very simple. 
And that's the other thing that, to bear in mind, is that God makes simple things like, you know, like on earth here, man, woman, get together, have a child. Right? So how did you come into existence at the soul level? Well, obviously, God got together and had you as a child. God is constantly trying to illustrate to you the truth through your own life. And that's one of the ways. So, so the key thing to here to bear in mind is that too, that this, the, the answers are actually going to be quite simple in the end. And the truth is always quite simple in the end, but usually a child can understand truth. The problem with most of religious beliefs on earth is they have been created by the intellect trying to understand emotions that they're not connecting to. And so, do you understand what I mean by that? Like, if you're in an emotional state, you don't understand it, you're not connecting to it, you're going to come up with all sorts of intellectual arguments and beliefs inside of yourself that then are spawned into religious beliefs and into religious movements even. And then there's religious movements breaking off of religious movements and this is how we arrive at the condition that we arrive on the earth today where, you, where nobody knows how to determine truth. And this is why I say to you, get back to the real simple thing, is it loving? Now, we can apply the same rule to any belief, including beliefs on Christianity. Is it loving to believe that one person, right, died for all of your errors? Is it loving to the one person? Obviously not, is it? So, therefore, it can't be a truth. It's quite simple, isn't it? If it's loving then it can be truthful. If it's not loving, quite blatantly not loving, to one person or to many, then it must be an error. So let's apply this back to the reincarnation beliefs. Yeah.